All right, my name is Nathan Workman, and I'm with the Legal Writing Center here at Charlotte Law, for those of you who don't know me. Uh, today we'll be covering how to use editing software. Now, um, editing software within itself is kind of a vague term, so we're going to go through what all that means today. Pull up my presentation here. All right, so what we'll cover. First, uh, we're going to cover StyleWriter, what it is, what it does, how to access it, and how to use it effectively. Next, we're going to be going through Microsoft Word. Um, many of you are already using Microsoft Word, but you may not know some of the useful editing tools and metrics that it has within it. And then finally, we're going to be going through the internet. Um, it's pretty big, but unfortunately, it also has a lot of bad information. So we're going to be focusing on the useful links that exist therein. First, um, StyleWriter, what it is. It is a software package. Um, it is typically focused around editing your, um, your documentation. What it does is it has uh, patterns of writing that is inside the program that will track your writing and find common errors like ambiguous, complex, overused words, uh, wordy phrases, and particularly passive verbs. That's what it's uh, the most useful for, in my opinion. Um, what it's not, it's not artificial intelligence. It's not scanning your documentation, thinking about it, and then giving you a result on it. Uh, it's not content evaluation. So if you write a really lousy, unorganized paper, it'll be a very clear, cohesive, and unorganized paper. So it won't, uh, it won't help you with any content. Also, it's not a substitution for revisions and your own personal editing. Wish it was. Now, uh, what it does, again, it searches for patterns in your text, and it's analyzing those patterns for certain metrics. Um, the first one is a style index, which we'll go into at length. Um, your sentence length, which is obviously how long a sentence is, and then your passive index, which is how many passive sentences you have within your document. Um, typically, lower scores on here are better scores. It highlights potential errors that you'll see in a minute. It'll explain the potential error, and then it will give suggestions on improving that error. And then finally, it's going to give suggestions based on the context in which you're writing. So if you're writing a legal document, it'll give you legal suggestions. If you're writing an advertisement, it'll give you advertising suggestions. So it's something nice to use, not only for your um, briefs and your work for LP, but also in your other classes and then throughout the rest of your life. So first, how to access it. Um, it is a program within itself, but it runs inside of Microsoft Word. So you're going to open up Microsoft Word first, you're going to open your document, and then you'll see this little style writer icon. It looks like a little um, tablet with red text on top of it. And that's, how you, that's what you click on to find it. Um, how to use it effectively. We're going to be doing a sample um, presentation here for a couple of minutes about uh, a document, and we're going to all together use style writer to see if we can make it better. Um, what I do when I use StyleWriter is you see all the highlights as suggestions. Don't take them as gospel. Not every suggestion needs to be fixed. Um, passive tense and word choice, I generally do change if it brings those things up. Um, a lot of us use certain terms over and over and over again, or we have kind of lofty text that we want to throw in to make people think we're smart. A lot of times those also mitigate our documentation and make it uh, less cohesive and also less understandable. So uh, word choice, I, I would typically follow its advice. Other suggestions are mixed. Um, it won't like a lot of redundant words like in order to and furtherance of, but a lot of times you need those in your transitions. So a lot of times if you're, if you're building your transitions between your paragraphs in a legal context, it won't like those things. It thinks additionally is too wordy. It'll think um, alternately is, um, is jargon or abstract. So it, it gives you, you know, some advice and you want to be sure to stop, but it's only a yield sign. It's not, it, it, you, you don't have to make every mandatory change. Also, if you see groupings of highlights, even if they're not all mandatory <coughs> changes, if you have 12 highlights in one paragraph, you need to rework that paragraph. There, there's something in there that might tell you that uh, the flow is off or the style is not necessarily what it could be. So I, I would look at it for that. Also, know when to stop. Uh, there are some people that have started using StyleWriter that are students here that have helped them get the program that, um, or two L's that will spend more time on StyleWriter than they will on the document itself. That's, you you want to avoid that. It can get addictive, I will admit. Um, I like things like this, but um, don't, don't spend more time on style writer than reading and editing your document. You're just reinventing the wheel. Also, never replace brevity for clarity. Style writer places a large emphasis on brevity, but um, brevity only aids clarity. It should never hinder clarity. If you're having to delete so many words and make so many substantive changes that it's no longer really clear what you're trying to say, then try to replace those things. And again, always, always, always focus on clarity. Now. Um, what we're going to do here, I have a document. This is um, not someone in here's document, it was someone in the last session's document, so um, no one here has to be embarrassed. 
but it doesn't have a name on it anyway. So what we're going to be doing is um, pulling up Style Writer. As you can see, here's the nifty little Style Writer button on the toolbar. We're going to click it. Now it takes about two to three seconds per page to process. And since I'm running dual monitors here, it'll pop up on my screen first. And I'll drag it over for you. And there it is. Now, um, again, a good place to start, and where I typically start, is at the bottom. We can see it's got uh, just over, um, just under 1,400 words here, and we've got a style index of 80, which it says is poor. And if you click, it'll give you a little definition um, anywhere you see a little book. Um, average sentence length is 27, and passive tense is 60, so that's not too bad. But uh, we're going to take a look at it here. For your professors, uh, generally the papers that I've seen come through that are B plus and above are getting a passive index of below 10 are getting an average sentence somewhere within 22 to 24 and are getting a style index of about 10 to 20. So you can keep that as a general guideline, but um, again, there, there are some good papers that fall way out of those lines as well. They're not really on passive index. Almost every paper that I've seen come through that did well is, is much lower on passive index than some of these others. So we're going to take a look. Um, I'm going to spend about five minutes with you going through some changes on here. And uh, we'll ask you all what you think should be done in this circumstance. So we got Reverend here. As you probably heard me harping on for forever last semester, it is the Reverend, not Reverend. Um, just like when you're using Honorable in a judge's name, it would be the Honorable as opposed to Honorable. But that's neither here nor there for this suggestion since it didn't pick that up. But it thinks Reverend is a confused word. Um, typically, people that are using that might have meant this other word but didn't put it in. So in this circumstance, we really mean Reverend. So we're going to ignore all in the document. Same thing for slander. As you typically know, um, people outside of the profession of law um, confuse slander for libel. So it's asking you here whether or not you really, really, really mean um, slander, or do you mean libel instead? So since we mean slander in this document, we're going to hit ignore all again. Now uh, the next problem that it finds is required. So uh, the, the reason being is required typically has compulsion. Uh, mixed in with it. So it, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean required in, in most circumstances that people use it. It's the same for altercation. Uh, altercation means uh, physical violence. So you wouldn't say he had a verbal altercation. It'd be a misnomer. So here, and it, it would also catch that as well on, on style right. That's typically uh, one of the examples that I was using last semester. So in here, um, it is it's not necessarily compulsed in the elements, right? You're, you're trying to meet it. So you would s you'd probably say uh, three needed elements or three elements. We can completely eliminate required here and uh, still mean the same thing. So how do you make an edit? Well, you can do it one of two ways. You can hit the edit button here or you can just change it in the text. But what we'll do here is just hit edit. And the cursor will take us right to the error. We're going to hit delete and then hit resume. And now you can see it updates. So it's automatic updating as you're doing it. Now if you change something within here as well, let's take establish and we're going to say um, prove. It automatically edits in your document. So we're going to minimize this for a second and you can see that um, it's, it's changed right here. So the nice part about it is you don't have to change it in two places. If you change it in one, it'll change it in both. Um, tended to, might have, you know, things like that, they're, they're kind of redundant. And also, they, they're weeble words. They make your document, uh, they make your text and style a lot more uh, inconclusive, and it, it makes you look like you're not really confident about what you're writing. So we're going to try to delete those anywhere we see them. And StyleWriter is very good about catching qualifiers and, and words that can be edited out. Now here, it's not going to like this sentence because it's 63 words. But unfortunately, um, here's one example where you can kind of ignore StyleWriter. Um, obviously, if you have a sentence over 100 words, you check your head. You need to be editing that down. But for something like this, where you have multiple elements, we're using semicolons here. So I would only use the words within the semicolons. So if the words within the semicolons extend through 35, then probably need to edit that down. But um, generally, I'd treat a semicolon as a period for purposes of StyleWriter. For this, that that's a fine sentence, and that's to be expected when you're doing um, when you're when you're stating elements. Also, um, let's, let's go through the next one here. Requires, same element as before. Uh, being accused, the first of many passive uh, verbs that this document's going to, or the style writer's going to find for us in this document. 